Today we'll look at some tips for getting started with SimCenter 3D. Here you can see the Discovery Center. When you first open up SimCenter 3D, there's several tabs where you can get more information on what's new, tips for newcomers, and uh, Discovery Center. Here we'll begin by creating a new file and we'll create some geometry to get started. You can see there's uh, ribbon bars along the top with different function groups and to get a consistent look and feel I recommend you go to the content role and select advanced. This will open up all of the functions available in SimCenter 3D on the menus. Otherwise, by default, some will be hidden. So here on the home ribbon, we'll go ahead and create a block. We can give it some dimensions. Now, navigating, you can use the scroll wheel on the mouse to zoom in and out. If you press mouse button 2, it will rotate. If you select mouse button 2 and hesitate, you'll get a bullseye, which will put a center point on the geometry where you're hesitating to allow you to rotate about that point. Mouse button 1 and 2 simultaneously allow you to zoom. Mouse button 2 and 3 simultaneously allow you to pan. All right, so let's go ahead and create a simulation model of our block. We'll select Application Pre-Post. That will bring up the Simulation Navigator, where we can right-click and select Create a New FEM and Simulation. Here we can select the bodies we want to use, whether we want to create an idealized part or not. We'll go ahead and select create an idealized part even though we're not going to use it in this demonstration and we'll create a new Solution 101 linear static solution in the NASTRAN solver environment. Now we can create a mesh. We'll go ahead and create a C-Tetra 10 mesh on the part. To select an element size, we'll click on the automatic element size. Next, we'll assign a material property. Here you can see in the navigator, the mesh is sitting inside of a mesh collector, which is called model, model 3 there. We'll go ahead and edit the mesh collector. And we'll edit uh, the material. Here we'll select a material out of our default material library. We'll select 310. And we can also name the collector after the material. All meshes within that collector will then inherit that material. All right, now we'll move to the sim, which is where we'll select our constraints. We'll assign a constraint to the bottom face. Here we can make sure we're getting a face by selecting it in the selection bar that we want to only get faces. That will put our fixed constraint on that face. Here you can see that uh, no translation constraint on that face. Then we'll create a load on the opposite face. We'll put in a magnitude and a direction. Alright, so at this point our solution is ready to solve, but if this is your first time solving, I recommend you take a look at what license type you own for Nastran. If you have 13500 SimCenter, you'll want to select the desktop solver. If you have a 12500 license, you'll want to select Enterprise. You can also assign uh, some keywords like parallel processing, 
helps the job to run maybe a little bit faster depending on how large the job is. We'll go ahead and run uh, Live Solve. It uh, will bring open the solution monitor and here you can see the solution is completed in two seconds. Here also is an information window where you can see a uh, solver model setup check to see if all of the parameters of the solution were specified. Uh, if it passes that model setup check then it will solve. Here uh, if we had selected strain results we could check analysis quality. Uh, since we did not select strain results in our output request we can't. However it's easy to, uh, to turn that on if that's something you'd like to take a look at by editing the solution and then editing your output requests. Here you can see a lot of output requests. We can filter it by the solution that we're running, Solution 101, to select our strain output request. All right, so if we were to rerun, then we could check our analysis quality, but uh, we'll go ahead and post-process our results instead. Here we can first take a look at our displacement results. We can easily animate those to visualize how the part will be deflecting. And we've also requested stress results. We can take a look at those as well. And here, if we'd like to look at uh, average stresses, we can turn on our average averaging. All right, now if you're once you're done post-processing, uh, to get back to your model, select Return to Home, and that will bring you back to your sim where you can uh, go ahead and save. All right, and that concludes the demonstration.